Hey guys, welcome back to the new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a pro player Twitter header. Um, I would usually have a preview of what I've already created, but I'm just going to be going this. I'm just going to be doing this tutorial right off the top of my head, and it'll kind of take you guys through the process of my mindset. So I have nothing prepared. All I have is rated. Um, I think it's his 70,000 subscriber pack. So yeah, the link to download that, well, to his video to download that would be in the description, so you guys can follow along using the same stocks that I have. And uh, yeah, so um. Um, we're going to be making a header for an able, so I've got a few photos here, and um, I'm going to have a link, this link as well in the description to this photographer's uh, Flickr account, where you guys can see all these photos. But whenever you use these photos, you must give credit, you can see, by David Doran, you make sure you give credit to him, just because you don't want to get caught up in uh, copyright and all that, but um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so what we're, what we're going to be starting off by doing is going to file new, and we got our dimensions by 1500 by 500 pixels and you should be presented with this and uh, what I usually do from here just import the photos I usually download more than I need just so I can see which ones work best together so I might just resize them to the whole banner and then we might get a few in here just to see which ones work best um, so yeah we we'll just drag these all in resize them just like that and uh, yeah, apologize if this is quite a long video. Like I said, this is all completely off the top of my head. So um, it's kind of like a, a speed art walkthrough. It's because this would this would have been a speed art, but I'm just kind of walking you through um, what I do. So uh, yeah, so uh, let's just get all these photos in, and now we can actually decide which ones we want to use. So, yeah, these are all pretty good photos, but um, I don't know. Maybe I don't think we should have two photos of him in the same place. It's like I don't think we should have. Uh, these two photos together so we probably have to pick one and I probably prefer this one so we'll use this one and um, so what we might do is we might have this one on this side uh, this this one in the middle and then this one on this side you just kind of want to lay out all your photos just to position them all to work to the way you want them to be and now once you've done that you want to hold shift and select all of them uh, right click and press rasterize layers and now they are all images and not smart objects anymore so now we can edit them. So what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to flip this, uh, let me just hide the others, we're going to flip this image just so this one is kind of facing into the banner and not outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to press uh, Command T while selected this photo layer. So press Command T, we're going to flip it just by right clicking, go flip horizontal and there we go, we've flipped it and now these photos will make a lot more sense because they're all facing into the center and uh, yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to unlock our background just by double clicking on it and press OK. And now we're going to go to our uh, make black or foreground color. Just by doing this you can either click and then select black as your color or you can just click this icon right here. And then we're going to go to, we can either press Alt Backspace on our keyboard in order to fill our background. So as you can see we can just press Alt Backspace and it will fill or we can just go to our paint bucket tool and just click. But either way, either way works. And uh, yeah, so now we've done that, we've got all our uh, three photos on a back on a black background. And now what we're going to do is, I'm, I like to lower the opacity a bit, just to get a bit more of the black. And uh, just actually no, we might leave it at 100. You can you, sometimes it works if you leave it if you lower the opacity, but we're not going to go for that kind of style on this header. Like I said, this is completely off the top of my head. So uh, yeah, we'll go for this kind of style. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go for our eraser tool, which is over here. Go to eraser. And then click on the photo that, uh, that well, you, you're going to do this for all the photos. We're just going to erase the edges of the photos just so it kind of fades into the black. And to get the fade, you need to make sure that the hardness is on 0%, just like that. And then you can just click, and uh, yeah, you can see it starts to fade. And you want to do this for each of the photos, uh, just like this. Okay. And just so we don't get such a steep ending like this you can see it's just all of a sudden and it doesn't really look good that way so yeah we just want to erase these ends just like that okay and then we'll do it for this last end here I do prefer to just keep clicking instead of clicking and dragging just because if you do want to undo something you can just undo it really easily instead of having to um, undo all of the progress you just did that yeah when you um, when you clicked and hold okay <clears throat> so now we've got all of our three photos here I might add some color correction so what I might add first is some black and white just add a bit of contrast to it so you set all of these to zero okay just like that now I might set this to overlay and as you can see it really makes the colors a lot more harsh and uh, it looks kind of cool that way so you might lower the opacity a bit 
and there we go you can already see that we've already started to edit some of the colors and uh, to make it look a bit better so now what I might do is I might go to our human saturation and just lower the saturation just so we don't get so many more colors in uh, okay I might actually edit this middle picture individually just because there's such a bright background and we don't really want that so um, so what I might do is I might click on our middle image then go to hue and saturation again which is up here if you don't have your adjustments tab open just go to window and adjustments and it'll be right there and then what I want to do is I want to click on the hue and saturation I want to right click and then go to uh, create layer mask uh, clipping mask right there and now everything we do to this hue and saturation will only affect this image so what I might do is I might click on the hue and saturation and then lower the saturation right down just like that and then I can click on the mask for the human saturation and then I can erase it from the people just so we don't lose all the color in the people but make sure that uh, we are still making the backgrounds uh, black and white so okay so as you can see we've got the we're just adding it back the colors just by using the eraser tool on this on the human saturation mask it's really easy to do this part and uh, yeah it looks really cool as well um, okay Another thing we might want to well, that we could do is just erase the background completely. As you can see, it's still pretty dark. I mean, it's still pretty bright. So we might add another brightness and contrast again, making it a clipping mask, just like that, and then just decrease the brightness, and then go to our brightness and contrast again, and then just erase, just like just like we did for the human saturation. Okay, just like that. And just do this for all of it. Let's just do that real quick. And then finally his face. Okay. So as you can see, we've really doled down the background. And it's starting to look a lot better that way. But as you can see, we have this really... I don't even know what this is, but it just looks really... I think it's a TV screen in the background. So to get rid of that, I'm, I'll probably pen tool it. Um, just to make it a lot more accurate instead of uh, just using the eraser tool because when you're making headers like this you really need to be accurate just for it to look really well the best you can and um, so yeah let's just pen tool it real quick this probably won't take too long just to pen tool just go around it just selecting the area that we want to remove Yeah, sorry if there's like these awkward pauses, just because this is like going to be a long video. And um, <laughs> like like I said, there's going to be no cuts, but I'm going to try not to make any cuts. And it's literally me just going off the top of my head. So if I need to do something that doesn't really need much explaining, there might be a bit of a pause. Okay, so now we've made our path. We're going to right click, go to make selection, and this should be zero, and then anti-aliased, um, and then new selection and all that. And now we can just press delete, and there we go. You can see that it's gone. Um, but as you can see, we can still see a few white marks in there. So what you might do is go to our eraser tool, okay, and then increase the hardness of the of the of the eraser, okay, just like that. Now I might make my brush a bit smaller by using my square bracket keys, and then we can just erase the white, just like that. You could use the pen tool again for this, but um, it's probably a lot easier, a lot faster just to use your eraser. And there we go. You can see that we kind of kind of got rid of the bright orange background that we had there before and we kind of well probably we could probably enhance it a bit more just to make it a bit like these backgrounds literally just by going to our razor tool again and then just lower, lowering the opacity probably down to about 60% and then we can increase our brush size probably not that big but um, right click lower down our hardness again I'll probably put it to about 20% actually uh, so let's just do that real quick okay and then let's zoom in a bit and then now we can actually start to erase our background if it actually let me okay let's just zoom in now now that we decrease our opacity it won't make it completely black but we're also getting rid of this bright background and yeah again we could pen tool this but it'd probably be a lot easier just to do it this way so let's just keep erasing. You guys might not need to do this for your photos just because 
you might not have this bright background in the back of, background of yours but uh, yeah if you don't you, you might want to just fast forward me uh, getting rid of the background and yeah it might be a lot better for you that way so let's just get rid of it okay I just want to get rid of this glow that we have coming from him. It doesn't really matter if you go just over the person. The, the brush isn't 100% so it won't completely remove him. Which is fine and it's what we want. Uh, okay, we're almost done. Like I said, if you don't want to see this part you can just fast forward. But um, yeah, you, you might need to know this just in case you have the same issue with your photo. Okay, so as you can see, we've removed the background, and uh, yeah, so what we might now do is add a light coming down, and yeah, so to do that, you want to make a new layer just above everything we've done so far, make sure that uh, white is your foreground color, then go to your brush, you want to make it uh, pretty big, kind of like this, this would be a good size, and you just want to click once, you do want to make sure that your hardness is on 0%, just like that, and then um, you can just click once, uh, I might set this to overlay, Actually no, I think we'll keep it and just lower the opacity. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's good. And as you can see, our background is pretty bright now. So uh, what I might do is I might go to our color creation and then go to brightness and contrast. Just uh, increase the contrast a lot. There we go. And then we can decrease our brightness. And okay, it's not looking too bad right now. And uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to increase the I mean, decrease the saturation. So, we're going to go to our human saturation that we had before, just double click on it, just decrease it even more, and there we go. Okay, so now we've done that, I'm going to add another color creation, it's called curves, which is right here. And I'm going to make a nice S shaped curve. And um, once I've done that, I'm going to set the blending option to luminosity, and then I'm just going to lower the opacity. And it kind of be, it makes the darks darker and the lights lighter and it just looks pretty cool and as you can see our, our head is not looking too bad at the moment we got all our photos and um we got all our photos and they all look in the same environment so there's no like uh, one's got a bright background like we did have earlier so uh, yeah it's, look, it's looking pretty cool right now but as you can see we have this like i don't know why it's, it's, it's probably just another light but over here we have this really bright light it's really distracting so we're going to get rid of that as well and this will be a lot easier just because it's really on the end so you just want to click on the photo that, it, that it's in so it's in the right photo you get our eraser tool and then we can actually increase this back to 100 percent and then you can just erase it that way there we go and you can see it just looks a lot better without it and we could do that also do that um over here as well uh so yeah let's just get rid of all these annoying lights and should we leave that one there no we're gonna get rid of that one as well just because it kind of if you're going for like a dark theme and you just have these lights in the background they can kind of ruin the style that you're going for and it'll be a lot easier just to remove them than to uh, have something that doesn't look as good as it should so you just want to remove all these lights you could use the pencil like I keep saying you could just use the pencil but we're just gonna use the eraser tool just for the sake of the tutorial and it's a lot easier this way and a lot faster and there you go you can see that we've removed it we removed the, the lights in the background and um, yeah so um, now we've done that we can actually start adding stocks and things but what I might actually do first I might add some color to it just so it looks a bit better so I might add a new layer just like that uh, by clicking on this icon go to our brush tool and maybe we'll add a red and then we can just click once there I might actually put it above the color correction just just so it's um, just so we get the effect that we want and then we change the blending option to hue and uh, it kind of adds a red tint as you can see it just makes him a bit red but we could try a few of these these all of these look pretty cool so you can see color and then we can lower the lower the opacity down just like that or we could literally just set it to overlay and that could have a nice effect as well it's literally just seeing what looks best um, yeah this doesn't look too bad Okay, and another way of doing this is by going over to down here, it's, it's kind of like another adjustments drop down menu. You go to gradient, 
and then uh, we could we could just have a fade going up like a red fade which is the default and then change this to overlay and you can see we got a nice red fade going up and then if we're gonna do that we might as well just delete this um, brush that we had on the right over here and then as you can see we added some cool colors and it's actually not looking too bad and uh, yeah so once I've done that you can see that we still got kind of a big chop off right here and I don't really want that so what I might do is what we did at the beginning of the tutorial is just literally get our razor tool make sure that the hardness is on 0% uh, let's just wait for that okay then we can click off and then we can actually wait what what picture is it we need to find out what picture it is first okay it's not that one so it must be the one on the right so let's just erase all of this okay there we go now we can see that there is no more of a um, a chop off there and uh, this red is a bit overpowering so we might actually just lower the opacity just a bit and um, yeah okay so now we've done that we got all our pictures in we got our light and it's um, it's, we've got nice effects going on so now we might actually add some stocks so as you, if you if you have downloaded rated stocks you will get all of these they all look really cool and the, I think these are all stocks that are rated as actually made himself by using other stocks so you can literally just drag these in and um, so yeah you might leave it like that and then you can put this in the background and um, actually no we'd have to put it above the pictures just like that and then we can change it to screen Oh, not, not color dodge. Change it to screen. As you can see, now we've got some of these sparks in. It looks really cool. So, uh, yeah, the rated uh, stocks are really good for headers and stuff like that. So, I really recommend you go and download that. Uh, the, again, the description, uh, the video, his video would be in the description. And uh, I also like to use his manipulation textures pack because you kind of get to play around with these. Because as you can see, if you go to his sparks, you, you literally just got sparks at end. You can't, you're not already use, you're not using already made textures. So um, or stock, so you get to kind of make it yourself, and uh, sometimes it can t work out better that way. So I might just drag in these sparks. Uh, I'll probably make it a bit smaller. Okay, so we'll put those there, and uh, I don't think we need to. I might. Well, it, on your header, you could probably duplicate these and put some more over here, but uh, I think we've already got enough over here just because of the stock we added earlier. So I might just leave that. Okay, so now we've done that, I might add another color correction. So as you can see, a lot of these headers are, there's a lot of color correction involved. So I might go to exposure, increase the exposure a bit, and then increase the gamma correction. Uh, I'll actually decrease the exposure. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, that's pretty cool. And um, now we can just add more stocks. If you wanted, we could go back to rate the rated packs, and uh, we could open some flares. And he's also got some grunge textures in here as well. Uh, so where are they? Textures, and you can see we've got some cool grunge textures here. Um, we might just drag this in, just like that, and just make it the size of the header. Okay, and now we can just put it in the background. You can either put that there or just above the pictures. And then uh, what should we? You can try a very um, quite a few amounts of blending options. So if we send it to overlay. We can then erase some parts away from his face. Um, just go by going to our eraser tool over here or by pressing E on your keyboard. Just click once, press OK. And now we can just erase parts from his face and some parts that are important, just like here. And um, if, if you find that the texture is a bit too grungy, as you can see, it kind of like grains things, you can blur the texture. So you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. <laughs> and. Um, and we can just blur the texture just a bit. As you can see, as to his hand, it doesn't make a bigger, such a big effect to his hand. And um, yeah, it looks pretty cool that way. And uh, yeah, so um, now that we've done that, we could just keep adding more things from uh, rated packs. And uh, yeah, so what should we go with? You might go for something like this. So just click and drag this in, just like this. But with when there's um, stocks like this where there's a lot of lights, you might want to change the blending option to screen instead just like flares really so as we send that to screen we can then lower the opacity right down and um, as you can see that looks pretty cool like that and then we could erase like I said before just go to our razor tool click once press ok and then you can erase from the important parts um, just like his face and yeah I think it looks pretty cool in the middle so we might leave it like that there 
and uh, yeah so what I might do is I might want to add more light so you can see that in the, on the sides it's quite dark so we might want to add some more lights uh, so as you can see we still got this light in the middle there and so we might want to make uh, click to the top where our other light is and then make a new layer then go to our brush and then make sure our foreground color is a white just click once you can just click once in each corner and then set these to overlay as well as you can see you can see it kind of brightens up the sides and it's kind of cool that way but if you're going to do that you might need to add some more color correction just to make them contrast a bit more so just make some more curves drag it to the top and I might just make one drop there okay that's not too bad it's kind of cool and uh, yeah so what we might do now we might add another gradient map so more color creation and then um, might change this to soft light and then we'll actually lower the opacity uh, and now we can just I like to use some of these default ones I think everyone has this one this work this gradient here works really well with most headers so I might just use that and um, yeah so uh, now we've got that gradient map on we might want to add some text now so what I might do is I might see this, could, this kind of relates to my game themed header tutorial that I made quite a while back where I could basically bring out the text from his back uh, but that, that would look pretty cool but um, I think I'm just going to keep it to the middle so uh, to make sure that our text is centered you want to click on your background layer at the very back and then press command T and then just click drag that into the middle and then uh, drag from the top and drag that down as well now you can press command colon to hide and show them so we just keep clicking that and we can hide it and show it and uh, yeah so now we might add some text so it's going to go to our text tool or press T on your keyboard and just click so his name is enable so we'll just put that there um, okay right now you can't really see it just because it is behind the picture so you can see it's behind the picture on the on the um, on the images here so we just want to drag that up and uh, yeah what I might do is I might make it so it comes out from him but then it goes over Mr X so to do that we just want to make a mask on the text so just click on your text click on mask which is right here and then we want to use our pen tool and then just pen tool around uh, enable so we just want to keep just go around him just like that just a very broad one and so once we've done that you want to right click go to make selection just like that and then we can show our text again and click on the mask of our text and just press delete and actually I didn't actually make the mask uh, high enough so as you can see it just kind of cuts into him at the top so we can just continue our um, we can just continue our masking make selection and again we can just delete it from the mask and there you go you can you can see that it kind of comes out from him and looks really cool that way we can just uh, click on our text and we can move out if we wanted to and then we can change the text by just pressing T and then editing it so I might want to change the font uh, I'm gonna use a font by creative grenade so I think it's called Rayleigh or something like that uh, let me just find it uh, attack oh there we go okay um, what font should we go for there's a various amount of fonts we could use uh, okay so now we've got our text you can kind of see that it's a bit too spread out you can see that it kind of comes behind him there as well so what I might do is I must I might press command T and then we have all these texture options that come up and I could use this to make all the text all the letters a bit closer so I'm gonna select all of my letters by pressing command A just drag this in and then we can see that our text becomes a lot more together and uh, I will need to move it out from behind him just so it's a bit easier to see uh, and uh, yeah so I think that'll be fine and now we can just move this out I think we're gonna have to delete the layer mask though okay so we've deleted the layer mask and we're gonna have to remake that now so uh, just go to layer mask again no oh, we don't make two uh, let me just delete layer mask delete the layer mask there and now we're gonna remask uh, from enable again so we're just gonna hide him and then we can just mask him out wait I'm just trying to I think I think it actually ends here I don't know what this line is here uh, I think we're gonna go by this line just like that okay and then we can just finish off the mask go to make selection and then just delete it from the mask on the text 
and then we can actually show the text you can see that it actually doesn't really go in to him at all and uh, yeah it looks pretty cool like this this font actually works really well this kind of um, with this kind of header so what I might now do is I might add a layer style. If you haven't got my layer style pack, you can go download that in one of my past videos where I did a uh, layer style tutorial and actually left the pack in the description. So you go download that. The link to that video will be in the description as well. So um, what I might do is I might add a gradient. And um, so yeah, we'll do a black to white and then we'll just click reverse. Just search from the bottom. Then go to multiply, change the blending mode to multiply and then just lower the opacity down. And then uh, actually, First off, I think we need to make the text red, just so it works a bit better. We might actually might land up changing it to black, but uh, yeah, we'll try red. And uh, so we're just going to double click, double click on our text, and then go to gradient, and then change this to multiply, and then again change this to a regular black to white, and then just lower the opacity. Now you can see that we got a cool gradient, and um, yeah, now we might add a drop shadow. So make sure the blend mode is multiply. This is black, and then the opacity is 52%. Uh, might want to actually we might want to increase this. We might try. Uh, okay, we, it's because it's quite a dark header. We might try 100%. Uh, so we will increase the size, uh, increase the spread as well. You want to make sure the distance is zero. Otherwise, we can see that um, it will kind of go to one side. But we want the shadow to be around the text. So we want to keep the, des the the distance on zero. As you can see, the text kind of really stands out and it looks really cool like that. And um, yeah, so what I might now do is go to satin, it might add a cool satin. So I lower the opacity, uh, make sure the blend mode is on normal and this is on black. And then we can just play around with these. Um, yeah, so we can just see what looks good. Again, I would explain going to how to make the layer style in more depth, but I have got made a whole tutorial on that. And again, that will be in the description. And then I'll keep the contour on this, uh, the higher in the middle. And uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. This text works pretty well. And um, yeah, so now I might just fiddle some more with the color correction. And uh, so we might add a photo filter. And then we could just go through these warm filters, see which one looks best. And of course, we could pick our own color. But um, I think we're just going to go for the first warm filter. And okay. So as you can see, we got our banner here, we got our text. And um, what I might want to do is I might want to. Actually, I think I'm going to lower the opacity of this red. I think it's still a bit too overpowering. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. You can see we've got it look, kind of looks a bit brown, but oh well, it looks kind of nice. Um, so <laughs> you can see that most of our layers are actually color correction. But um, yeah, what I might do now is I might blur some parts of the banner. So what I want to do is I'm gonna click on the bottom layer um, down here, and then I'll hold Shift and click on the top one. Press Command J to duplicate it all, and then press Command E to merge it all into one layer. And um, so now what I might do is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and it pretty much blurs everything as you can see. Uh, so yeah, just like that. And now we can go to our eraser tool. I like to decrease the opacity just a bit for this. So I might do about 70% opacity. And then we can just click on the points of focus and then just to, er just to remove the, um, the blur from that part. And yeah, I think this head is actually looking pretty cool. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, now once now that we've done that, I might go to make a new layer. Make sure it's above all of your layers. This is something that Sesso does a lot in his tutorials, so I kind of got this from him. Uh, so yeah, so you want to use your selection tool to select the whole banner. You go to select, modify, border, and I like to do about two pixels. And then I will press Alt Backspace to fill the selection with the foreground color. And then you can see that we've got this white border going around and then I'll go to overlay and then you can see that we have this cool kind of uh, a line going around and yeah it looks pretty cool and um, yeah I might actually just lower the opacity the lower the opacity down a bit as well and uh, yeah so now that I've done that I'd probably add the uh, the sponsors and the social media that he has so what I do is I'd go to his Twitter so I just go to Twitter and I look at his current banner just to see what kind of text is on there and then we can just copy it pretty much. So, uh, well, okay, this video is going to be going for half an hour. So if you're, if you're still here, then um, <laughs> thank you for watching, I guess. But, um, okay, so we'd go to his Twitter. So it would be enable. Okay. 
and we can just see it just says phase clan and he's got the two sponsors there so we'll just add g4 and scuff so um, now we need to think about the placement of where we're going to put these so i might uh, make a new layer there then go to our brush tool because I have all of my social media icons and sponsors set up as brushes as you can see here I have made a tutorial on that I made a tutorial a while ago on that um, uh, so yeah you can, I'll put a link to that in the description as well so there's gonna be a lot of links in the description but um, yeah so what were they there was scuff and there was gfull so it was gonna go okay so it was gonna go to our brush again and we're gonna find uh, scuff, here's scuff, and then I'm just gonna use our brush tool, make it a bit smaller just by using our square bracket keys, and then I will just put that right there. And actually, I might make it red just so we can get the same layer style as the text. So we'll make it a full red, just put that there, and then we can copy the layer style over just by right clicking on our text, and then go to copy layer style, and then paste it onto. Oh, that's actually really hard to see now. Uh, Alright, so, uh, okay, we'll just remove it. I don't think we'll need it, just because it's so small and it'll make it really hard to read. Um, so, yeah, so we got our scuff logo there. And then, I actually don't think I have the G Fuel logo as set as a brush. I might need to add that. But, um, I might, for now, I'm just going to use the Gamma Labs. Uh, yeah, I don't think I do. So, um, we'll just use the Gamma Labs logo. So, let's we'll make this smaller again. Just like that. And actually, no, it needs to be the same size. So, you want to just match it up and then move it across. Okay, so you can see we've got both of our sponsors on there. And um, yeah, this that this head is pretty much finished. It looks really cool. And uh, yeah, if you did actually last this long, this is actually, I think it's my longest ever video on my channel. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate a like. I did this actually all in one cut, so I was pretty surprised by that, to be honest. But um, yeah, if you did find this helpful, please leave a like. If this video gets. Um, 40 likes I will leave this in the description and uh, yeah so thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video